Hello, my name is Stephen Kelman. Today I'd like to chat you through some more about typography for editorial design with more content heavy layouts in mind. So that's newspapers, magazines, or even more complex annual reports. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to use the A4 three column layouts I created for Adobe InDesign. These come complete with a baseline grid, style sheets, baseline aligned copy, body copy, and a picture grid with space for one line of captions. There's also an additional option of an F8 grid. Now more on that shortly. You can purchase these layouts from the links below this video. Now, there are a couple of key challenges we face when we work with body copy like this aligned to the baseline grid. Let me just turn off uh, spelling there because we're in Latin. So there are a couple of key challenges we face when we work with body copy aligned to the baseline grid. Now let's take our content style out here. The first one is our header styles don't align to our body copy. So let's turn off smart guides. So if you notice there, if I wanted to a header running alongside some body copy or a pull quote, something like that, then if we'd align to the baseline above, then immediately doesn't align with our body copy alongside. Another issue is we have images, then our body copy is not going to align to the top. You'll see there we align to our baselines, but not to the uh, top of our body copy. Now, one way to resolve both these issues is to create an F height grid. Now, on first look, this may seem a little bit complicated, but if you're already familiar with baseline grids, the addition of an F height grid should be relatively straightforward to work with, you know, and you'll get the hang of it really quickly. So let's go ahead and start creating an F height grid now. Let's start with a simple three column grid with our top and bottom margins aligned. If you're interested in creating a grid like this one uh, and you've not already seen it, then my modular baseline grid tutorial would be a blue, good place to start. I'll put a link below this video. Now, let's go ahead and create six rows with 20 point gutters. Now there are 20 points because we want two rows. We need two rows for our captions. So let's create guides, uh, fit guides to margins. We want six of these. And like I said, we want our gutters to be 20. Now, the first thing we want to do here is, go to, is to create an F height layer in our windows, uh, in our layers window. So let's go to new layer. Let's call this F height. Then we want to take, this is an F height grid, so it's based off from the height of an F in our body copy. So let's grab an F from our body copy. We'll copy it in there. So Command Shift O to convert that to outlines. And let's put that in the top baseline. Let's turn on Put some guides, smart guides, that's smart guides on. We hold command, then we drag a guide down from our rulers, and that should snap to the top of the F. So that's us got our first F height guide in there. Now let's change this immediately to a gray, so we've got some differentiation in there. Let's change that to light grey. Let's view all. 
Let's make sure that this is on the F height layer. So that was on, on our base layer. So let's copy and paste that into our F height layer. Let's just change the green to red, sorry. And let's change that. Make sure our ruler guides are light gray. Then simply step and repeat. And remember our baseline unit for this one is for this grid system is 10 points. And we're already at 75, so I'll just show you there. So if we if we get 75 of these, so you'll notice that that takes us right up to our bottom margins. That's it. That's that's basically us. We've now got our F height grid, uh, which probably looks more complicated than it is, but simple thing is we can turn this off and on whenever we need it. Let's go ahead and start start dropping some content and let's drop some images and see how that's looking with our F8 grid. So when we want to use our F8 grid we use it to align uh, to the top of our let's lock that just now we use it to align to the top of our uh, images and to the top of our headers things like that so if we have an image and then I'll just check these are let's turn smart guides off so we're aligning to to our f8 grid for our top top of our pictures and then just our standard baselines for everything else now if i go ahead and replicate this across the page so if i wanted to have six six images let's drop some captions in there as well Now, one thing you'll notice is that our gutters, our vertical gutters, are slightly narrower. When we use our F8 grid, our vertical gutters are slightly narrower than our horizontal gutters. So that says 20, 20 points for our column gutters, and we're at 23.635 for our horizontal gutters. So one of the things I like to do is make sure the distance between our, our pictures is are, are always the same. So all we need to do here is make sure our spread is selected and just copy that measurement for uh, our horizontal gutters and let's change our column guys to match that. So You'll notice once we've done that, we can then copy that over, and we've got equal distances between our pictures. So, if we wanted to, we could go in and add captions for if you know if we, these were well, let's start a layout here. So, if we had a couple of small images and then maybe one large image, making sure we follow our F8, F8 grid and our baseline grid. Remember, you can turn the F8 grid off and on anytime you want, or toggle using W to see the uh, preview mode. And let's turn the F8 grid on again. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and drop in some body copy, said we're working with uh, content-heavy layouts, so let's go ahead and drop in some placeholder text here. Fill with placeholder text. Let's change that to one of our body copy styles. Body indent. Okay. Now remember our columns are 23.635. So let's go up Command B to change the number of columns to three. We can turn preview on and we match our gutter to the layout. So that's us. So you see there we've got relatively copy heavy page. We get three columns and we're using the F8 grid. So what happens then if we wanted to go in and drop in a 
pull quote, something like that. So if we took, say if we use header style B, uh, we wanted to run it alongside, uh, along the first two columns. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on uh, text wrap. So we just want it in one row. So we're again, we're aligning to our F8 grid. Let's fill that with placeholder text. What's this there? Now obviously you'll be wanting to design your own layout, but you'll be able to see how this can immediately start working for you know, much more kind of content heavy uh, spreads. There's loads you can do um, in terms of layout options, things like that. Um, but the F8, the F8 grid really gives you that functionality to work with more copy, more images, picture captions, uh, headers, pull quotes, things like that. And you've got that additional level of structure that the F8 grid gives you. Uh, and remember, it, it looks quite complicated when you've got the baseline grid and your F8 grid turned on. But remember, you can turn off the F8 grid whenever you want and toggle using W to get a, a better look at the print preview. I think that's it for now. Uh, obviously, if you've found this tutorial useful, please like and subscribe. And remember, you can purchase both the F8 version of the layout for Adobe InDesign and the non-F8 version of this good system for Adobe InDesign from the links below the video. Thanks a lot.